video focuses on inner and outer compositing, as well as perspectives, two different features of Pixera compositing that allow us a higher degree of flexibility when programming and will enable users the ability to more easily program across multiple screens as projects become larger and larger. These features will also become pivotal when we start looking at a future concept called screen groups, so make sure you pay attention. All right, let's check it out. All right, so I've prepared a project here where I have four different screens available. I've simply added these in the Screens tab. And when we're in the Compositing tab, if we start moving our position values, if I move it to the right, we can see that eventually I make my way onto that next screen there, and I can move my Y values. Right, so we can maneuver this content around to a bunch of different screens. But what happens if I maneuver my content off this way? Or if I maneuver it off by clicking using in-screen editing. And I've saved my keyframe over here, and now I can't see it anywhere in my compositing space. This is where the inner compositing space comes into play. And the inner compositing space is accessed with this top left button over here, which is called the dive in button. The way that we can think about these screen objects here is that they're actually windows into some kind of uh, world that we are just peeking through from this outer compositing space, or sometimes we call this the stage view. So this what we're seeing right now is a stage view or an outer compositing view. And if I click on this dive in button or I can hotkey D to dive in, we can see that my workspace has changed a little bit. My void looks a little different. My grid looks a little different. It's now flat up against the screen instead of a three dimensional grid. And we can see that we now have my content over here to the left at that position value that I saved a keyframe in. There's my keyframes. So I could now click on this and move this back over. And just to show this, uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and add an output here. And so now as I move this back over, we're going to be able to see that content appear on that screen object and appear in my output again. So this may be a more clever way to work or a better way for you to work if you want to dive into the inner compositing. This just allows you to see all of your texture space at the same time. So I can click and drag this. I can now make this bigger, for example. So now this is showing on all four screens. Notice I have these yellow diamonds here indicating dominant values. So I'll go ahead and save all of those. I can now jump out and we can see that that piece of content is scaled up and showing on everything at the same time. So while I'm in inner compositing, and you may have noticed this already, there are these faint gray rectangles here that almost seem to correspond with our screen objects in the stage view or outer compositing. So we can think of these little gray outlines as a outline of the window that we are peering into this inner compositing world with. If we jump back out into outer compositing, we see those outlines and we can see, yep, indeed, you know, we're missing most of this X on Pixera here, and that X is kind of floating mostly in between all of those outlines. If we want to see these perspectives a little more closely, we can click on this selection mode, which says F4 toggles, or I can click on this, and I can go to my perspective selection mode. And watch what happens when I do this. We now have the outlines have showed up a little more prominently, and we can actually see what our screens are named and their resolutions, as well as their positions. That's this third set of values right here. So 
these perspectives are associated with our screen objects out here. Utilizing these perspectives in unique ways is how we can start to break some of the conventions with our outer compositing view. And one of the most obvious ways we can do that is I could take this perspective and I'm just going to select it by clicking on its name in the workspace here. And I can actually move this and I'm just going to press shift to get my snapping going again. I can move this to cover the exact same space that my main A was covering. And let's look at that from outer compositing or stage view. And now we can see we've actually duplicated that view. I'm going to dive in again. And I'm going to grab main C and move this perspective. And then I'm going to grab main D and pull this perspective. So they're all overlapping each other. And if we jump back out, we can see we have the same view for all of them. And notice that if I were to grab this piece of content and move it around or move it around using my position values here, it's all moving, it's moving the same piece of content and each perspective is seeing the same shift. So we only have to program it one time and the same thing's gonna happen over here. This is really important because we can see when we're doing this that even though we're rendering it only the one time, we're able to play it out of four different screens while only pulling it off the hard drive once. So we're actually saving performance by doing things this way. So that's inner compositing, outer compositing, and using our selection modes to grab our layers or our perspectives in order to shift what our screens are seeing in inner compositing space. One last thing about these perspectives here, we can access their parameters. If we click on one, we have them in the inspector and I can always hit reset, which will reset its uh, view back to where it originally was, which is associated with the screen objects position. I can also access these perspectives over in our library panel in the screen gr group tab. And I can twirl down this screen group and we can see each of these different uh, perspectives. And so I can click on B, we see it changes in the inspector, then I could hit reset here and that resets main B.